I think three things to start off with. The work that we've done uh, is reinforcing that land within the green zone is still suitable for residential construction. However, not all of the land will perform equally in future significant earthquakes. And that's an important thing. Um, and some areas will require more robust foundations or potentially site-specific foundation design. And I'll take you through what that means. The work that the department's led um, uh, with uh, a number of experts that I'll just talk about in a minute has come up with three technical categories. Um, we've called category one, two, and three quite uh, innovatively. Um, and, and the importance of that is to say, this is how we expect the land to perform in a future event. Um, the people that we've involved in that have included people from uh, the Earthquake Engineering Society, from Structural Engineering Society, from Building Research Association, or, or BRANDS, Geotechnical uh, Society, um, EQC's been involved, and a number of other experts, and also quite significant overseas input as we've gone through. So it's, been very well tested by very experienced practitioners from New Zealand and overseas. But this is the northern area and if you see up in Kaiapoi, um, yellow is category two. So you'll see outside of the red zone most of Kaiapoi is category two and the blue area that you can see is category three. As you move down into the northern suburbs of Christchurch, again uh, there's quite a lot of category two being the yellow area and a little bit of um, category three interspersed. As we move into Christchurch proper, um, off on the left here in the west area, this grey area is category one, and I'll come back to that. In, generally, uh, in general, that category one is uh, slightly higher ground. It has uh, gravels underneath. It has a relatively lower water table level, um, so it's not so subject to liquefaction. Um, and it has, a, in, in general, a thicker crust. So that's that category one. As you move into central city, there's more of the category two in, in yellow and a bit more of the, the blue, category three, and over to the west, you're starting to get more of a mixture of two and three. So as you move towards the coast, there's more of that category three zone. And then in the south, um, you'll see um, uh, the, the townships out there are Category 1, um, but there's this big swathe of Category 2 in the middle, and that was work that was previously, previously done by Selwyn District, I think. Um, and what we've done is try and match up so that we've got a consistent mapping across uh, Canterbury. So what does this mean? So for Category 1, uh, it's unlikely to experience significant damage from liquefaction. I'm not talking about the shaking damage, but liquefaction of the soils in future earthquakes. So in that case, uh, they can use standard concrete slabs and timber floors, um, uh, and they're acceptable for foundations that are required to be rebuilt or repaired. And those standard foundations are generally included in what's called NZS 3604. It's used across the country, so they don't need to change. Um, however, the things that have changed is that all concrete floors, if they are concrete floors, have to be reinforced with ductile steel and tied into the perimeter foundation. And no longer can people build unreinforced concrete floors. Um, there was um, some uh, people who were building an unreinforced concrete floors. The work we did at the end of last year and earlier this year, um, uh, we ended up saying, no, actually that's not an appropriate way to build. So that's not, that's not appropriate anymore. Category two is where we would expect minor to moderate land damage from liquefaction in future significant earthquakes. And in this case, uh, there's two options. One is they can use the standard timber piled foundations um, through New Zealand Standard 3604, provided they are lightweight cladding, lightweight roofing, but also a suspended timber floor. So you're reducing the load on the building, so it's not tiled uh, ceilings, it's corrugated iron or something of that sort. So you don't have the same amount of weight. Alternatively, they can use an enhanced concrete foundation, which has a more robust floor slab and it ties it together. And that's some of the work we've previous, previously published and I'll come back to that. So they've got two options in that category too. 
When we get to category three, that was the, the blue zone, um, we expect moderate to significant land da damage from liquefaction in future significant earthquakes. So you've got a much bigger impact as you move into that category three. However, there's no one size fits all for that because some of that land is quite variable and that will require site-specific geotechnical investigation and specific engineering foundation design uh, where there's damage to uh, the foundations. Um, what I would point out and, and just repeat uh, the Minister's comments, this isn't necessarily something that's brand new. Um, that has been a requirement in Canterbury and Christchurch in particular where uh, in recent years or over a number of years really where there has been identified that there is deep layers of liquefiable material. So what we're doing today is saying um, actually let's be consistent right across those areas that we've identified. However, it will be subject to geotechnical investigation that might bring it back to category two if that, that work is done. So it's not new in Christchurch. Um, it's also been common in other parts of New Zealand, including the Port Hills. In fact, um, Christchurch City Council for a number of years has said if you're building in the Port Hills, you must undertake a geotechnical investigation. So it's starting to try and get some consistency in those areas that the investigative and scientific work is showing um, should be treated that way. So what does this mean? Um, in general, it means if you're in Category 1 or Category 2 that need to be repaired or, or rebuilt, then in terms of the technical guidance, um, there's no technical hold up for those people. The solutions are available, they can use those solutions um, and the council will accept those solutions because they've been closely involved in this work as we've worked through. Homeowners in, in the category three have two options. Um, they can rebuild in those areas but it will require geotechnical investigation and specific design by appropriately qualified people, generally a, a chartered professional engineer. Alternatively, um, they might wait for some more generic designs um, that we're looking at, and I'll, I'll come to that in a moment. In category three, uh, deep piled foundations may well be suitable, um, but not necessarily in every case. The department's also conducting some research um, uh, and a field trial on potentially innovative solutions. And we, we're doing that in conjunction with um, Tonkin and Taylor. Um, in QE2 Park, we have a secure site where there are four foundation design systems that we're trialling. Um, it's in a quite compact area. And we will test that by liquefying the soil by a series of small detonations. It's well away from houses, so it's not going to affect them in any way but it will simulate an earthquake. And then we'll be able to test those four different methods and see if they work. If that works, then that's something that um, we may be able to roll out and which will reduce cost for people as well. So where are we at? Um, uh, we've got summary guidance on repairing and rebuilding and that, those are in your packs. There's a small, I think it's an orange uh, coloured folder. So that's just a summary of, of where we're at at the moment. We will have more comprehensive guidance out next month. So uh, repeating the work that we put out before Christmas, we've revised that with input from the technical experts, particularly for categories one and two. Um, and then in mid-December, the, the trials that I've just talked about uh, should be complete and we will publish the results of those trials as soon as we've got that and we understand what they mean. Um, and then in the new year, hopefully, we will be able to come up with some more generic solutions that people might choose to use. Um, and finally, in terms of those maps that you saw earlier, um, uh, www.landcheck.org.nz, people can go to that and they can actually see, this is my property, is it in one, two or three? Um, and then use that to move forward in terms of, well, how would I design for those various categories?